build like a, a play set for my child. That's what I really want to build, like a wooden one. But I know that's probably dangerous and <laughs> not great, but I just have this itch to like get some wood and some tools and just carve something awesome out for him to play on. Um, but yeah, so that's what I would do. I'll pass it to you, Zach. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, back in 2000, I don't know, 10, 11, and we were trying to make this village I'm living, like a crypto village. Of course, like it was a failure. Like we were telling everyone, you should, guys should accept Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. And everyone was like, hey, guys, we don't know what you're talking about. Then now they are asking questions now, which is also bad. <laughs> everyone knows us. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like, you know, have a village with people that are in the same mood, like, I don't know, like imagine like a village where all of us are there, like, you know, common stock, either TC, I don't know, I think that'd be fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to do because like people have a sort, you know, commitments and some people need to stay in other places, but I don't know, it's always, uh, I don't know, if in the future or someday I can build something like that, I think that'd be super cool. Um, yeah, I'll pass it to Juanca. Thanks. Hey, Griff. How are you? <laughs> um, the question is, what would you like to be able to build? Um, I would like to be able to know more about like high end technology and like designing computers and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, that that is something that that I think passionates me. Um, when I, I had a, a miner and uh, a rig, our old rig, and like I always played with its, its parts and I assembled it and I liked it, but it's like an old technology. I would like to, to know more about like ARM um, structures and like processors and stuff like that. And I don't know, I think all that is, is really cool. Um, I would pass it to Acid Laser. Thank you, Wanka. Uh, since I was a kid, I want to build like a garden, you know, full of grass, plant my own fruits, um, my plants, and something like this. In my in my house, uh, we used to have like a mango tree, but and it was amazing. So. We have a lot of fruits in the in the backyard, and and I want to rebuild that that stuff in my house. Uh, and I'll pass it to to Griff. Man, mango tree is tough to follow. Uh, <laughs> tough act to follow. Uh, I I feel like I'm building the things I want to build. And this is what I do all day. Is like uh, build Bernie Man camps and uh, decentralized like like basically token economies. I just get off on all that, and I do it. And I'm already doing it, so I feel pretty good. Uh, I will pass it to Tam. Thanks. Uh, and I'll wrap it up by saying in my 20s, I read a book called The Physics of Star Trek, which I really liked. It's like a nonfiction book. And it, you know, it's like it's for, um, you know, science entertainment, you know, like it's, <laughs> but it's like it has a sound scientific basis. And just the transporter. I've always been transporter beam. I've just always been obsessed with the transporter beam. It just how good would it be if I could just be like, beep, and I'm with Septimus, beep, and I'm hanging out with Griff, beep, hey acid, you know, like that'd be so cool. That'd be so cool if we could just transport ourselves into these little windows that you guys are in. So I still love the idea. So if I, so this is a little different. I went like, like, like not a reality, but like if I could really build anything, like anything, anything, I think that's what I would build. So let's, uh, let's get started. So uh, today we're going to, uh, we have a, this short agenda here. Uh, sorry, I think I, yeah. Um, I don't know why I'm struggling, sorry, to share the screen, uh, which is basically um, Zeptimus wanted to get some advice process for the transparency working group. So that'll be on our agenda today. That's the only thing on our agenda today. 
So if we end up uh, ending a little early, uh, that's, that's a possibility. So is that, do you want to uh, share anything or do you want to take over and uh, give a sort of the context and the things that you want advice process on? Okay. I'll yeah. To you. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. I mean, basically like, you know, with all this restructuration like going on and how we see like the TC, like the last, I think what the retrospective of the, no, the, the, the stores planning, like we were talking about like, you know, the needs of every working group, what the TC really needs. So basically I kind of step ahead there and basically I like, I'm trying to get feedback uh, firstly like from the stewards uh, and then, you know, if there's discrepancy between the stewards then maybe like, you know, get the community more involved, but firstly like if the stewards reach an agreement, I think like it's enough quorum. And you know, if like, you know, if we stop like any activity, that doesn't mean like it has to stop, like any community member can and then say, no, I think we should still be doing that. And then, you know, push to make those things happen again. But basically, yeah, uh, I prepared like, I mean, I was working with police, but then the questions were very disorganized. So I'll, I'll prepare like, you know, just a Google Doc there with the activities like run like monthly on transparency. And yeah, the idea is like get the feedback from the, from the state, what, you know, like for example, recording. Do we want to keep recordings as they are today? Yes, no. Maybe we should only record, you know, like community calls and some strategic calls. Like, you know, what do this really wants? And uh, and basically when I get this feedback, like I'll try to make like a plan on how to make like those, like imagine like we only want to keep, you know, uh, recording from all these activities. So maybe like we should have like, uh, you know, maybe like, we have like the stewards budget or now like we still need to make like a plan how we make sure like those activities are still happening even if we don't have a transparency working group like budgeting all those activities uh so yeah like i listed that like the transparency activities and i would like like if we spend like five minutes saying which ones we want which ones we don't i also dm like you know the rest of the stewards that didn't came here uh so we get like stronger feedback Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. So, no, go ahead, Nate. I'll go after you. No, I was just curious because, um, you know, a lot of this has, um, you know, kind of this cost benefit uh, analysis of like, you know, how much time do, are we are we putting towards this function of like recording calls, for example. You know, we, we have so many videos of almost every meeting that we have up on YouTube. Uh, each of the each of those videos may have, you know, between five and 30 views. Um, and it's worthy of, of keeping, you know, those in individuals informed to review those things. But if, if, if the time that we're taking to actually uh, upload, to record, to go through that process, um, I'm just saying uh, having context for those types of things are really important uh, for each of these. So um, perhaps you can go one by one and provide a little context for each of those functions. Yeah, I mean, if we start with the, the recording, like for me, the recordings are not like for the views. It's basically like we have like the content there. Like, I don't know, we have this meeting right now and Libby couldn't attend. So, you know, if Libby wants to see what happened in that meeting, so she can just go on there and check. That's like the main purpose. Uh, the cost of the calls are like right now, 10 die each. So it's actually pretty cheap. It's like, now that we reduce the calls like a lot, it's like, uh, I mean, I can open this other. Let me share my screen. Uh, screen two. Okay. Uh, basically, on July, for example, like we get like 420 uh, on recordings. 600 on June, there was more calls there, but then we reduced it. And then in, you know, in August was like, uh, then you open the other, talk. like we have every three months, we have one of those documents. Uh, give me one second. Mm. It's actually on the forum. Ah, oh, by the way, the transparency proposal is up uh, to, yeah, uh, rearrange all those things and also retroactive funding from, from September. 
uh, my yeah basically you can see here August was 320 and September 390 like that's the cost as today of the recordings and again like the purpose was not like the views but to help the people who is already in the community to get whatever content they missed that was the the main intention yes yeah, so it's uh, between three to four hundred a month is that what you're saying die to to yeah have this feature of having recording what about it like time time commitment of of people uploading it's actually it's pretty automatic like people can just you know put press the button to record and do anything else like oh wait there is not record oh yeah for instance like Barry is recording this call but he's not even here like he just put the computer he just press a button and then he do whatever he's doing uh, and then it's like yeah we're recording him and die just for doing that And of course, he like goes and uh, uploads it. Yeah, as, yeah, of course. As, uh, yeah, which is but, really what real work is, right? Like, yeah, actually, but it's actually like also like you just drag the file, and then you just put the title. It's like five minutes maximum. So I feel like it's 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 well rewarded, and at the same time, it's cheap to the commons. So yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Should I keep? Should I go like to all of them, uh, and then we vote? Or I'm really curious about the next one. So I'm surprised that we'd have to do like new uh, designs for every call every month. Yeah, actually, like as Laser is doing those, uh, because like he put the title. You know, like it's like uh, he used kind of the same designs, but he also like have to. You know, he has to put the time to go to each video, update the thumbnail, and he changed the number. For example, if it's called like 29, he just put 29, the title. So, I mean, it takes some time. Uh, we could, I don't know, use different like uh, standard designs. I mean, as laser is here, I, so he can also like, uh, you know, point how to make this uh, uh, cheaper, but it's like 120 uh, medium. Like, it's like, you know, some of like, 80 some 130 it depends like also on the amount of videos and the time as it less spends there uh, but that's actually like the cost for the thumbnails we have and if you want to explain more as it later, since it's something like you're doing yes well i just use like a template but in each call i change the the number and the background because i use like the, the discord um worse of of the call but if you want to only use like a basic template for for each uh working group i, I feel okay about it i have no worries you know like just a color or something but the magic is to use our to i don't know i i think that it, that it, it gives like more um more life to the to the video but but it, it doesn't take too much time. I said some months are 80 bucks or less. I think last month was like 50, something like that. So because I, I did it quickly, so it, it doesn't matter. I don't know. Oh, I need to charge my, my laptop. So I'm just trying to understand what that means. It's sort of the, uh, like if you go to a playlist, if we go to the videos, I guess. Yeah, I, I can show. Actually on September, uh, as Laser didn't do it, so he also like didn't get paid on September, but he was saying like he wants to do like October and September together. So, but basically it's like something like this. Uh, I mean, I have say, say September is not done. But yeah, you know, it's like this, like he, community call, he used like green, and then he put like the, I can show it bigger, like nine, one, this number of the call, like he, 
yeah, he gets the picture of the of the Discord, and he does it like for every working like every working group have their own color, and then for example, if we have like a special video, uh, I remember now the one when we were on, on Paris, like he you know uh, takes more time on those like because of that, like special videos, but then for the regular calls, like he just use those ones those those templates. Yeah, it's especially cool because look when you scroll over it, then it like and it plays, then it like fades out. It's like ooh, oh, <laughs> oh. Oops, that one's not doing it. That one is cool though. It's weird that it does it for some and not others. I don't know, but it's cool. It is super cool. And it keeps the YouTube like, you know, more organized. The visuals, I think they're great. Oh, wow. Did fire emojis just pop out of the world? <laughs> <laughs> it's a new feature. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I think, uh, uh, yeah, that's basically the idea on, on the thumbnails. Uh, then the third one, like we are doing also like, you know, credentials management. And yeah, the, I mean, that's something like we will still be doing. So, but the question is like, do we want like, you know, any active member on the TC be doing it or only stewards, like, you know, how we define a trusted person to carry those? Uh, that's the one I, st I was struggling the most, like thinking, but yeah, we could also use some advice process here, like credentials management. I feel like this is one of those uh, subjects that I really wish we had a tool that was automated, like we could automate the permissions on this. Mm -hmm. Right now we're using, yeah. I was just going to say that right now we're using Dashlin. I mean, and this is like, Sam is working on, on Bogota and like in the hackathon, he's actually trying to make a decentralized pod like to, you know, like then it's not like I have access to Twitter. I have access to Twitter as long as the token holders vote to me to have access to Twitter. And then when the, the token holders say, you don't have access to Twitter anymore, it's like you get your access out because like, you know, having access to platforms, like it's actually like a, a power thing. Like if I have access to Twitter, I can say we will have this, you know, this debate tomorrow, and then people will join. You know, <laughs> and stuff like that. I don't know. It's, yeah. Well, that yeah, that's a lot of scope. Good luck. Uh, yeah, I think we do have a tool. Like Zep said, it's Dashlane. But no matter what tool we have, we have to have someone manage the tool. So there's no way around that. Tracking multi sigs. Yeah, this is basically, uh, let me open, it's basically this document. Uh, what is it, this one. So basically, like, we put all the multi here and then, you know, track, like, sometimes, like, people get removed from the, especially, like, comps, like, they get, someone gets removed, someone gets in. So, you know, keep a track on what's going on with the multi -sigs. This is something, like, also, like, we're doing. Uh, I mean, this is like, you know, this is a simple task, like someone like putting one hour a week can actually like do, uh, you know, all of them, like, <laughs> you know, because it's not something like you need to be actively doing. It's like, just, you know, be active and keep an eye on them. Uh, like most of them, are, it's like, we're splitting them between me and Ivy. What is piece of work i mean once the multi-sig is existed when we you created that amazing dune dashboard where you can actually see the balances of the multi-sig what would you have to do every week i mean just check like you know there's a new proposal there's not like yeah there's a new multi-sig okay tag with gh gh can you add this multi-sig to the dune dashlin uh yeah it's just you know be an active role there uh, keep an eye Great. But it, but it sounds like that's just procedural, right? That's just a process. If there's an, if we are sending funds to a new multi-sig in CV, then we should have a process to just add it to whatever that, whatever that is. I don't, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, but also like we track the names of people there. Like it's not only the money, but also who have access to that money. Yeah, I think that there should be a process for that, but it seems like that's not a weekly thing. That's like when there's a new multisig or when a multisig yeah. ends, like for the creation of one or the ending of one, but not like a continuous hiring. Yeah. I mean, it, the but, is like yeah, but the thing is, like, if you don't have like someone, you know, looking at that information, it's like, yeah, new multisigs are popping in, and you know, oh, someone should do that, but you know, you need like someone carrying like a flag, as if I would say. Hmm. And it's like it's the same for like okay it's 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 later on but it's the same for this decision track uh, I also have on the other browser. Uh, I don't find this document. Ah, uh, this one. This one was a document that Libby started, but now we also like evolve it a little bit. And it's not like you know there's every week like decisions on advice process or a snapshot, but you know it's also like you know keep an eye on those. It's not like information it will be in the, will be available all the time, but it's like a document. I, I don't know, Nate, if you're using this document for the study case. Uh, Livia at some point told me like someone was using it. I don't know if it's you or not, but yeah, we're also like keeping this updated. I was using it, yes. Yeah. I think it's valuable to have. And actually, like this is like right now, like Ivy is doing this one, and she she looks every month on the on every platform, like you know, in the forum advice process, snapshot, conviction voting, and should update them. It's not like very time consuming. Uh, okay, we were here. Doesn't all of the payouts come from the multi sigs? C can you repeat? Doesn't all of the compensation come from one of the multi sigs? Shouldn't we just be able to automatically trace that through the dispersions from the multi sigs? You are in five. Do you want to give? Yeah, but the thing is, like multi, like uh, you only see uh, you know plus count transactions, so you don't see names at all. Like I can show you. Yeah. Would it seem like a, you know, we we have everyone, I mean, I don't know if this is, sounds like a violation of privacy, but we know everyone, anyone who is receiving praise, we have a mapping of their wallet. I, I mean, I don't know that, just, it seems like there's an automated solution to this. Yeah. You know, D-Work is one way to automate the yeah. solution, but it seems like there's another, or there's a second way to automate that solution. I, I think the, the, idea is more like give a trace versus just a multi-sig send right where it's like oh well what did you get the money for you know okay went to this person what did they do and it, whether or not we care right maybe that level of detail isn't doesn't matter and we can because we can automate this person got money from a multi-sig we can't automate context that's true so that's the advantage of the dwork solution is that it would have the context and the way we're doing right now, also, you have the context in the master sheet. Uh, uh, I think that my, what I think is the greatest challenge with implementing a, uh, you know, a TEC wide solution is what if, like, what are the consequences if a working group doesn't use D work? You know, what, like, what if there's a working group who decides not to use it? What happens then? Is there a penalty? Mis misinformation. Yeah, I mean, I think it oh, should be like, like... How do you force every working... Like, do we force every working group to use it or take a pledge to use it if you receive funding? I guess that's that's really, like, the, the big question for me. I mean, when I was talking with the, the work guys, like, the idea is, like, you know, do it, like, culturally, like, in the... When you do the... You know, when you do the proposal, you kind of agree to use D-Word, like, yeah, you're going to use D-Word, and this is how you are going to be accountable, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, somehow, like, if people don't use it, then this information will be lost. I think it's also important, uh, you know, we cannot have everything. And so if, and uh, we also seem to be sort of agreeing on the working groups uh, 
trying to work together towards a more concrete and common goal. And so if we are going to have every working group just use uh, different um, different platforms just because and then we all but, but then we also want everything uh, super clear about everything then you know it's it's that's that's either impossible or it's going to be expensive for us yeah i'm not, i agree with you i'm just saying it's like it's hard to implement a non-enforceable solution <laughs> It's like it, it, like like you just said. It's sort of like okay, this is what we want people to use, but just in general, we don't we haven't really mandated platforms for working groups to use, and have given working groups a lot of autonomy to be able to make decisions for what works for that working group. I think that we could persuade working group leads and working group stewards to try to use the same solution. I just that's the big challenge that I see with that. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. too much time. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, sorry. yeah, I mean, yeah, it's the only solution I know. Like, you know, if if you want to have it like, like for free, basically, it's like the only solution I know. And I actually know about that a week ago. I would push harder if I would know like the D-Work team were pursuing this, uh, but I actually know about that like a few weeks ago, like they have like all these milestones, tracking and all this analysis. I mean, I think it's a cool feature, but you know, if we, if we are you're either using it or you're not using it, and that's it. Wonka, are you still using D-Work? Yes. <laughs> Are there other project? Are there other working groups that are using DWORK? Comes, comes, but only Twitter. Cool. And that's it. I, I like DWORK because um, in Gravity we've we've had twenty one contributors, and something that I like from DWORK is that you can see. Um, how much has been distributed to each person, like a leaderboard. And um, it also connects to the Senhop board where we keep the registry of the cases in Gravity. So it's really easy to create a ticket from a case in the Senhop board and then just um, assign um, the bounty for the mediator in the work. And I assume everyone else, other working groups are just using spreadsheets, like they're not using any other tool, per se. Uh, well, Sampo is using Clarity, oh, okay. uh, which also has payments. And I think a lot of the other working groups don't have bounties, per se. They have more role-based compensation models. Uh, like, I mean, it's something you could shoehorn into D-Work or Clarity but it um, didn't necessitate that kind of solution. I mean, regardless of what uh, platform the working groups use, I think a big thing is the reporting. Uh, you know, if, if a working group comes back for funding, we, we probably should be more diligent in terms of saying, hey, what did you use the proposal for? Let's review your last, uh, um, basically, grant to see, see what work you did, where that money went, and how it was gone. I feel like a lot of that could be solved during the proposal process for further funding, but and then just have let them choose how they want to compensate. I also want to ask for those working groups that are using the work is like how 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 much the work is doing for them in terms of like because uh, uh, we did the exercise of the master sheet and I'm wondering if. If working groups are going to be using the work, but they also have to track some stuff on a, on an Excel sheet, we may as well just do everything or most of it on an Excel sheet and use the sheet as well, because um, you know it reports everything. Has uh, we, it's kind of flexible because we have we can uh, visualize data in any way we can. As Excel is pretty uh, flexible with that, and um, we wouldn't be imposing any tool on any working group. 
So I guess depends on. I, I don't I don't know how how powerful is the work anyways. Yeah, I mean, I think like the work is like very good tool, but again, like it's not like we I want. I don't know. Like as I say before, like I think it either it's on our culture or it's not. And if it's not, like of still a tool, like it's useful for some working group, but that doesn't mean like anyone has to use it. But I mean, I, I'm just saying, like maybe we don't want like uh, you know a fully detail on everything. Uh, so maybe we don't need the work, but. I'm just open up like there's the possibility there and the team is actively working on improving the analysis, you know, how to pull the data, uh, they're actively working there. So I think it's, yeah, it's, it's at least good to have in the radar. Uh, just, just really quick on NT's point, uh, Wonka, do you use spreadsheets on top of D-Work or not? Septi uh, supports me. Septi has a, a, um, a role in Gravity um, to help us with the treasury management. And, and he, he then um, like puts all information super clear. Yeah, actually, like, we use it and then move to the spreadsheets. OK, so you do put everything in. And is that, Septi, do you do that to conform with everyone else for this audit? Or do you do that because DWORK doesn't show it clearly enough? Uh, it's also because like DWORK gets pretty messy. Like when, like, you know, for the analysis, it's great. But for the, like, let me open it, actually, and I show you. Because if you want to track something on DWORK, when you go and open Gravity, uh, you go on trash creation, and then you see like, you know, issues done, but then they are not even in the same order. Like, uh, it's actually like pretty messy. Like you cannot uh, organize, like probably that's something like in the future comes with, but then it's like, you know, like if you want to see like, I don't know, the money we spent on August, like we cannot have like this information or uh, neither incomes, like, Gravity is also like having some incomes uh, from Aragon, like, you know, grants and stuff. And the work is not showing those neither. So I feel it's like good for the, for have more information uh, for Gravity. And at the same time, it's helping like the audit. So it's like two for one. I don't think then that the master sheet is probably the way to go. And as far as I know, it's not like, super hard to do that i think rex came up with um uh, I, I i don't i'm not sure what is it but i i think most of these platforms have like an uh csv export and then you put that into the is this spreadsheet and that's that's it and then we have the master sheet that collects everything yeah i mean i think the master sheet is great but at the same time it's also like you know it it requires time and love. So, and the question is like, like I mean, we, I, I still don't know like how the TC is going to shape. Like we will, like, and I, I don't know, like what's going to happen with the working group? Like is, you know, uh, what, do we really need that? Do we don't need? Like, yeah, that's basically what I'm also like trying to get some feedback in. Uh, where's the TC going? And if we need that, we figure it the way to keep it doing, and if we don't need, so we just don't do it, and it should be okay too. I do wonder, like the the question that you raised in the beginning is, I think the an important one, like how much do we actually want to track? Do we want to track the transactions that are like the funding, the movement of funds, or do we want to track what each of those funds is associated with? My feeling is they can take. you know, sort of understanding that, you know, one, one person, and, and this is where, you know, I don't, I don't know that we could do this using just the, the on-chain transactions, but 
one person is receiving, you know, what they're receiving from each of the different working groups. Um, but I don't, I don't know necessarily that we need to see a list of everything that person has been working on. I mean, I think that's like, that's almost like that's working group level. Like the working group should be managing that process for themselves. And if we think of, you know, the, each working group just as another fund receiver of the grant, we should probably be applying like the same idea to all the receivers of the grants, not just like, here's a token engineering projects, here's DAO operations, and we'll track them separately. I mean, I like the idea of having all receivers of the grants have some sort of uh, understanding of, of how and where that money is uh, being used or, you know, whether it's like reports from that grant receivee or... Yeah, some something ar around those lines. Like, I think that we should maybe have a solution that can in, that can encompass all receivers of funds, not just operation, but not just working groups. Something I was thinking from some time, uh, and it's also like I think it's cheap, but then again, like you need to somehow enforce it culturally. It's like you know something like I, I'm I'm actually doing it on every proposal. Like when we, you make the proposal, and then in this conviction voting thread like you type where you're spending the money and the milestone like Angela is also doing for the Tokyo Engineering Academy for the milestones so if we like you know get the commitment on doing those I think like then it's you know you want to see what the academy did so you go to their proposal and you just go there and boom all the information is also there and it's kind of organized since it's on the same proposal and easy to reach so it's transparent uh, but again like it should be like culturally Done. I mean, I agree with Tam. I think we should create standards and, like, you know, it, for for us to to monitor those types of things. I don't think it's necessary. I think what we need to do is set expectations that if you want funds from the common pool, then this is what we expect from you in terms of reporting, in terms of what 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 is um, given back the next time you come through. So it's like if you if you have you know, set out this roadmap of like, this is how we're going to spend funds. And then you come back and we look at the reporting and that's not the, not, not the way you spent the funds. The outcomes weren't what we wanted. Then you have just hurt your chances from uh, ever receiving funds from the common pool again. And so I think having that kind of one of trust, and then you can build trust from there with the community and token holders, and then let them decide with the transparent proposal process or template that you follow. Say, Hey, this is, this is what we have. I think the, the lack the the where transparency within the TEC should focus is on that proposal process, saying, "Hey, you know, if you want this to succeed, uh, this proposal, then you, we need this information from you, and this evidence from you, and let the working groups do the 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 bulk of the work since they're the ones proposing for those funds." Yeah, and another thing is like also like you know there should also be proposals that just ask for the grant one time and then. They don't even need to come back, but I feel like also they somehow should keep accountable. Like I imagine someone building a thing, then it's built, then you know you don't come back to us for funds, but it's good to also like keep accountability on how you you know at least that you build the thing and you know something like actually like I really like what Sam did when he made the proposal for the hatch and if he bought like he, he was putting there like you know okay this is received like I'm going to give a account about just, you know, reaching out on this form post. You know, doing it. Another yeah. uh, well, so some of the, like, for example, in BitDAO, they're like, they'll have, you know, uh, yes, I would support the, this proposal going to vote. No, I would not. And then this needs some work still. And so, like, having that kind of signaling. Uh, beforehand would be really important too um but yeah i i agree with that so. yeah and, and the last one is this that the spreadsheet like was like for the decision making this is like and also like something like we're checking on it like once a month. So basically like, yeah, those are the activities like are happening like on transparency, like regularly, like no matter what. So I actually like my idea is like get some feedback, which, which ones we want to keep funding and if any, 
and you know start moving from there yeah so you know the intention is like okay we want to keep recording so my my mission would be like have a plan so make sure like you know those recordings keep happening uh even if i'm not there or you know so yeah like the idea is make sure like whatever the community is seeing now like yeah we want this to be happening i'll i'll try my best to create a plan and make sure like they still happening for the long run so here's something i just i want to share and when it's when we think about conviction voting just anything that comes into conviction voting now the way i'm thinking about it is is the use of these funds would the use of these funds be better spent on token engineering research education or open source software like i i there's definitely things that the tc will absolutely need but there's a lot of things that are nice to haves and not needs and so i ask myself are these re do we really does the tc really need this or would this be better this be funds be better spent on a project to do token engineering research so that's the that's the criteria that i'm using to make my own decisions and i love the way you broke this down so clearly is optimistic really nice because it's very easy to <laughs> yeah it's really good it's really easy to be able to you know to sort of make a decision like i you know i was really in favor of like just cutting the calls you know like just stop recording them or let's let's you know what like is the tec going to really veer off track if we stop recording the calls i love what it brings though so it's like that's one of the hardest things for me to decide but if it's you know 500 die a month and um yeah maybe i mean it's it's a good art it's a, it's nice to be able to understand how much it costs actually i'm really glad you did this exercise it seems like um the they might be worth it in that case but is it 500 die that's better spent on you know the te academy and doing something there that's that's a, that's a harder question um credentials management seems to me to be something that's like absolutely must have like we couldn't even consider not doing this right so i feel like those things that jump out at me is like we can't even consider not doing it absolutely we have to do it we just have to figure out how is the credentials management one um and a solution for tracking the i don't know the milestones and compensation i think are kind of one thing you know like i think five and six for me are kind of for me would be up for like maybe maybe it's not worth like maybe it's worth stopping it for a while and seeing how what the impact is but it's just one opinion. I mean, I want to ask you, Tom, like when you say like the tracking multi six, like you mean like the document, like just the names and the money flow and do not care so much about the details because this is cheap. Like, I don't even, yeah, I don't even, so I actually wonder if rather than having, how many multi six do we have? It's like 14. <laughs> we can check. Do we, need four? do we just need like five of them? Like, do we need 14 multi-sigs? That's where, that's where I'm like, okay, now we have all these multi-sigs and we're tracking, them, but like, why are we doing that one? Is that the smartest way that we can operate? I mean, at some point, like, comes like one multi-sig for every work stream, like one for animation, one for translation. But actually, like, you know, if you're tracking them, it doesn't matter to what. It's just a line of code to, for GH. The, I, I think this goes more towards the, Overall, like, is TEC going to condense working groups into just core operations team? Where it's like, seems like half the working groups, most of the working groups could just be one person, or even some working groups could be one, a couple working groups could be one person, you know, like, uh, effectively. And, and, and if we condense down to that, then I think it's like, what are all these multi sigs doing? Uh, but we'd still need to make sure that we don't lose the money that's in them, right? Like, it, I can't tell you, like, I was just doing accounting for Dallas is really annoying. Like, it's it's like, oh, my God, there's money over here. Totally forgot. You know, it's you don't want to forget that you just sent $3,000 to this random multi-sig. So I, I think it's really important to know where they are um, and then 
putting processes so we don't have so many is another is another concept. Yeah, it's a good point. So the piece of work there is like anything, anytime conviction voting sends funding somewhere, we record that address and track that address. Um, is that um, like there are options to for for most of these things we have options because uh, like for example uh for for recording calls there's a bot that records the audio the what's what's complicated about recording calls is recording video um but i don't think we need the video we have we have again that the body the body is free that's that's the first thing um and i think it's a matter of us being creative enough to find those solutions if those are things that we really want and appreciate like the body's one command each time you for the multi six um you can put names to the addresses on on the safe interface the only issue is that say is that names are stored locally so you can put whatever name you want to to grief or whatever, but grief is not necessarily going to see that name. But if that's that's a practice we sort of uh, teach everyone who's on on multi six, then everyone knows who is on the multi six with them, and that's because that's what I do whenever I am on on a on on a multi six. I try to track down and put names to all the addresses. So when I need to uh, just ping them to uh, get them uh, to get assigned, I can do that. And so, I, and, and I think with that, there's a bit of everything we can do for each of one of the things that transparency and other working groups are doing. I actually want to comment on the recording bot. And, you know, like at the end of the day, like someone has to be kind of on top because, like, the bot will send a video on a Discord chat that it's going to be deleted in 24 hours. So, someone is still like, have, you know, uploaded on YouTube, which is basically like the the higher workload recording, like at the end of the day, I think it's easier just to click, you know, to like I was doing it for a long time. Now Barry is doing it. I think it's quite easier just to click a button on the OBS than just type a command. And yeah, I feel like it's easier and then more clean as well. Like the bot sometimes was was stopping. Uh, it was not as consistent as you know someone like clicking a button, which is actually easier than click a, com a command. And at the end of the day, you also got video. So even, if, you know, like what I'm trying to say is like, even if you go with the bot solution, uh, someone is going to be on top and it's going to cost similar, honestly. Like, I, I mean, I don't know how someone, how much someone is willing to receive or, you know, be on top of typing a command. And then, you know, then when you got the recording, if you want to play it on YouTube, you also need to add a sign to put it on Premiere. So then you got like an image to YouTube. It's like, I mean, I, I actually think like the bot is more work than than the like the bot that exists today. Not you know in the future, I don't know. But the bots that exist today, it, I feel it's more work than just use your OBS. I echo a lot of Tim's thoughts on this. I I really do think that the the big one is the 